over here to the X. And, uh, hey, I just unleashed you here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> These folks said they're definitely going to be tuning into you like, now. Like I said, shout out to all the X Squad affiliates. I appreciate it, man. Yes, yes. Now, back to what you were saying here now. I want to talk about your technique here because you said you really don't even go live with what you're doing. You. Yeah, I don't. On demand, right, with everything. So you record yeah, offline everything is on. Yeah, yeah, I do it. I do it. Um, I do it offline uploading. Um, I did the live thing for a minute. Um, but what I found was that my scheduling is kind of, you know, it's kind of crazy. So what I do is I go ahead, like, let's say, like, my show comes on Saturday night, 10 p.m., right? right? So what I do is I'll say, okay, sometimes throughout the week, whenever I get a chance, because when I bring it, I have, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of stuff for me to research. Like, you know, so I have to make sure that I have quiet time, peace time, and I'm able to actually, um, to, to, to be in a setting where, you know what I mean? I can actually, you know, do my thing. And, you know, my, my schedule kind of flip flops sometimes from, from a day shift to a night shift. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's just kind of crazy like that. So what I did was to stay on point and I make sure I kind of like stay on a, somewhat consistent schedule I, I try to pre-record it that way i'm not sitting there going oh my god i gotta go live you know what i'm saying and and they just called me in you know what i'm saying so um so that's what i try to do i try to have some already set up that way i can just hit the button and uh because spreaker allows you for, for those people that don't know um if you ever feel like you ever need to do an offline show spreaker allows you to schedule the upload you can pre-record it, and it'll automatically it'll, it'll sit there uh, in your files, right? And when the time comes, like if you if you schedule it for you know Saturday at seven p.m., you know what I mean. You could have recorded it Tuesday, but it'll sit there, and then you know if you if you push that that time and that date on there, it'll upload automatically. You ain't even got to be there. Yeah, man, and and. And the crazy thing is the numbers, like I said, you get extra, extraordinary, how you say that? Extraordinary numbers just being offline. So we, we've been doing a live the chat and, you know, live show, but I'm like, man, your numbers are like super. But you know young. what? It didn't start off like that, man. It, it, it was, it was a struggle. <laughs> it was a struggle. You know what I mean? Like it didn't, this, this came from what this is, man. And, and I was telling you the last time we were talking. See, my audience is kind of different. Like, and I, I realized this over time because I used to be like, man, why don't they, you know what I mean? I, I wanted feedback, right? And what I started realizing was brothers would just, every once in a blue moon, hit me up and be like, man, thank you for doing the show. Da, 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 well, I listen to your show all the time. And I'd be like, yo, but you never hit me up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'd be like, okay, but I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I learned to appreciate it because once once I actually started getting feedback, uh, some of it was some BS. So I was like, you know what? Maybe it's cool that, you know what I'm saying, people just hit me. Um, and also, you got to also take into account, I'm using YouTube, Spreaker, my website, um, and I'm, I'm using and Stitcher. So all of that is kind of like, being being put into that, you know what I'm saying? They they count them stats up. They they count them up like every uh, 48 hours or so. So even like old shows are still being listened to. Wow! Because of the tagging and the content. So like it could be like you know uh, like three months ago that I dropped the show and and for whatever reason, let's say like let's say I did a show on Black Lives Matter, right? For right. example, right? Okay. I did a show on Black Lives Matter. Now, three months ago, I might have had a certain amount of number, uh, a certain uh, number of listeners. But let's say Black Lives Matter has become a hot topic again. Right. Guess what? They go back and listen to the old shows. <laughs> you know, people people go back. They might not have even heard the show before, but the tagging and all of that is important. You know what I mean? To draw people in. That's why we're telling the X man. Descriptions and tags and titles are important. Mm-hmm. I say it again. Mm-hmm. Titles, tags, and descriptions are important because the world is searching, googling, looking up key phrases, keywords on Spreaker, looking up certain topics, and it pops up if you have the right wording. Exactly. Um, 
One more gear switch here, man. We talking sports because that's your other, your other strong suit. Oh, <laughs> oh I heard you hating earlier. <laughs> no, no, look, I heard that. I heard that New York Giant hate earlier. Listen, we'll get into the Giants in a second here. I'm gonna let people. I'm gonna actually let the Chief call in when we talk about the Giants. What's your college team? You you listen? You uh, watch college football? Oh man, yeah, man. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I don't make fun of me on this. Uh, I'm messing with Auburn. You know what I mean? Uh, I already got one of your one of your one of your haters uh, uh, when I first joined uh, X Squad. Uh, came on there and was blasting me because Auburn just happened to lose that night, and I was uh, I just I just went on there like go Auburn, and then next thing you know they just get beat up. So I'm like, oh come on, man. But uh, like how y'all gonna do me like that? But yeah, I'm an Auburn fan. Um, also like I kind of grew up watching Notre Dame, so I, I kind of. Tend to you know whenever Notre Dame's playing, I tend to watch them. Wow! All right, man. And uh, I hate Alabama. I yeah. hate Alabama. No, no. I hate Alabama. <laughs> I hate them. Can't stand them. No roll. I hate the Patriots. I hate the Patriots and and, and the NFL and the, the, the Crimson Tide and like the Patriots to me in college football. I can't stand them. Hate them. <laughs> Look, my man. Absolutely, I've been waiting for the day that uh, Nick Saban gets some some charges on him, or he get caught up giving some money to some student athletes or something, just something. <laughs> like I hate him like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my man, my man Grego, who's a, yeah. my man Grego is a Patriots lover. And he said, Giants and Auburn. He said, I hate you too, Victor. <laughs> and he loves the Patriots. <laughs> You know what, man? You know what? The, the Patriots are the best cheaters I've ever seen, man. Like, you can't even get mad at them no more. It's almost like, look, if you don't know that the Patriots aren't cheating by now, where you been? Because if there's no way to cheat, the Patriots are going to find a way to do it. And I can't get me being a military man. They used to say when I was in the, when I was in uh, basic training, they used to say, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. So... I can't get but so mad at them because I understand where they're coming from. If they feel like they can get a leg up on their opponent, they're going to do that. Except they haven't been able to do that against Eli. <laughs> wow. The phone lines are open. <laughs> the phone lines are open. If, if y'all ready to holler at Victor, it's 404-735-0602. That's 404-735-0602. If y'all want to holler at my man Victor Morrow of the Jamaro Report. <laughs> Look, you got two shows. I can call all your shows out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Let's see, you know, you know, I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot, man. Hard, the hardest work out here in podcasts right now. Man, what are you talking about, man? Uh, man. And believe it. Or not. <laughs> yeah, I, go ahead. I, listen, for a minute, for about two weeks, man, I was like, man, this dude here is tripping. Because, you know, we was in contact and he sent a phone number to me, but one of the numbers was transcribed. <laughs> So he gave me the number to the VA hospital. So I keep calling these, these crazy people picking up the phone. I'm not going to talk about the disabled veterans and stuff, but they were a little gung ho when they answered the phone. Like, listen, man, if you call me again, I'm telling you, man, it's the wrong damn number. So I was like, damn, Victor over there tripping, man. Maybe he's a vet. I said, maybe he's a vet, and man, he got split personalities and shit because he keep telling me he sent me the right number. But every time I call his number, it's another person talking about it with the vet. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, man, do you know Victor Morrow? They were like, hold on. So they put me on hold and shit, and they came back three minutes later like, we ain't got no V. Morrow here. And I was like, man, that's too funny. I was like, man, he there in your hospital somewhere, man. He must have gave me that's his work number. So. <laughs> man, that's, that is the funny. Man, and you know what, man? It was probably, I think it was one number that I, that I was off on. But yeah. you know what? And, that, <laughs> and it's crazy because... I don't switch numbers so much um, that I, I just, I, I guess, I don't know. I guess I just got to tangle up. But that's a, but that is, that is funny. When you told me, you was like, is it this, this, and that? I was like, oh, man, you know what? I probably gave you, <laughs> then, I probably gave you the wrong one. No, but I'm so, like, uh, if it's the VA hospital, how the hell they text me back, man? What kind of business can text you back? So they like, this is the man. VA hospital. You got the wrong number. We told you that before. <laughs> Like, you had some crazy people wanting to go off on you. Yeah, they were mad at me and shit, texting me and just like, yo. I'm like, what's wrong with the VA hospital, man? I said, man, that VA must be Victor or something. And I said, man, he over there. That's, that's, that's funny, man. That's, that's too, that's, that's hilarious, man. Yeah. Nah, man, but nah, that wasn't nothing intentional. 
I think I was off in the boy. So who did who who um who the Giants got this weekend? Uh the Ravens. Mm, okay, you in the day. And uh Yeah man, um you know the Ravens just lost to uh, the Redskins and uh a lot of Ravens fans for ducking Redskins fans because they gotta cough up some money. Uh so you know, that's <laughs> They've been staying up in Baltimore. I just put it to you like that. They ain't been coming down to D.C. lately. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I think the Giants, if they don't win this game, it's a wrap. And not only is it a wrap, but New York has no patience. And I don't know what's going on with Eli, but he don't look the same to me. It could be over for him. It could be over. That was something I was going to talk about actually in the um, in the Jamaro report that I think this dude Eli could be he could have hit the wall. You know he's been in the in the league what thirteen years, and you got to think at some point, man, you just you run out of that magic. You know you just run out. Right. Well, and talking ass, Chief Rocker, where you at, man? He ain't even weighing in on him, man. I'm waiting on him to call in here, man. He ain't called in yet. But, but listen, my man Grego said. You just cussed him out. He said, next to his picture of white Jesus is Saban and Belichick in his house. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, dog. Hey, listen. He said Saban and Belichick? He said Saban and Belichick on his wall. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Because, you know, that's foul. That's foul. That's blasphemy right there. <laughs> that's, that's just straight up blasphemy. You see, the Belichick thing don't get to me because... We, we, we knocked them out twice, you know. See, we, we, we handled business with them twice. You know what I mean? And that was the beauty of, of beating the Patriots that first time was watching everybody face, you know what I mean, when, when, uh, when homeboy caught the ball on his helmet. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, then when they came back and did it again three years later, that was even better because people told me the first time was a fruit. So I was walking around like, okay. What's up with them? Was that a fluke also? So what people don't know is that Belichick used to be a coach over with the Giants under Parcells. And guess what? Coughlin was a coach with the Giants under Parcells. So if anybody know how to beat Belichick, guess who it would be? Coughlin. Wow. People didn't put two and two together, but I just I just broke it down for you. All right. OBJ time, man. Your theory, yeah. Everybody jumping Oh, on man. You. Oh, I know y'all about to go, man. <laughs> ah. um, you took a big Beckham, pause. Right? What'd you say? Go ahead. I said you took a big pause on that one. <laughs> Beckham. 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 You know, um, Beckham is like the new Terrell Owens. Okay. Owens cried like a baby when he lost in the playoffs against the Giants uh, back in 07, yeah. And, you know, he had so much passion that he couldn't control himself. And Terrell Owens never really got in trouble off the field. It was on the field that he lost his damn mind. And that that's exactly what Odell Beckham does. It's so easy to get into his head. He just won't stay focused, man. And Victor Cruz told him over the summer, he said, you've got to learn how to conduct yourself on and off the field, bro. you got the talent, but you got you have to keep your head on your shoulders. And I thought that Beckham was going to take his advice and come into this year and make up for, you know, the, the, fun- the buffoonery that took place last year against the Panthers. And he's doing the exact opposite, man. Every time I turn around, he's doing something stupid or he crying or he, I don't know what's going on with dude, man. But, um, you know, I, I support him because he's a giant, but at the same time, you know, he losing, he losing a little bit of support for me. Wow. Hey, shout out to my man, uh, Reggie Lawrence, aka DJ Dollars and Cents, who actually just joined. He's also another ex squad affiliate. 
And uh, he's the other half of the S&M show, the Sports and More show, who come on Thursday evening.